Rocket company Astra is back to being a privately held company after three years trading on the NASDAQ. But will it actually ever fly again? Or will it simply run out of money before its new rocket has a chance to launch? It does have a checkered history after all. I'm Laura Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astralytical. To give a little bit of background, the co-founders of Astra, Chris Kemp and Adam London, they decided to take the company private. The only other option was to go bankrupt. Yesterday was was its last day trading on the NASDAQ. It traded for 53.9 cents. It was a public company for a little over three years. It had merged with a company called Holicity. That was a special purpose acquisition corporation. If you want the background, I did a whole video on space SPACs and the, the disappointments of space SPACs. So you can check that out here after this video. Ever since last year, Astra has been struggling financially and having conversations with its board about whether to go bankrupt or take the company private or in some other way get some other infusion of cash. There's an article from Space News that I'm going to put down below, and I'm just going to quote some little facts that they had in that article. Shares in Astra, when corrected for the reverse stock splits, have fallen by 99% from its peak in the days after going public in July 2021, and the company's market capitalization went from several billion dollars to $12 million. Ouch. So financially, this was a really bad move for Astra, but that doesn't necessarily mean Astra is gone for good. I want to talk about Astra's launch history, which can help give us some perspective about what they've done, what they've accomplished, and what they could do in the future. First off, Astra didn't start out with that name. It's a terrible name for SEO, by the way. It started out as Ventions LLC back in 2005, rebranded in 2016 as Astra. So it's not a new company. It is a startup, but it's been around for almost two decades. They have a little note in their marketing material that they were the fastest privately held company to get to launch. And I don't know if that's true. Not if you count the whole 2005 Ventions start. I think some other companies have been faster. They didn't start launching until six years ago almost to the day. Buckle in, I'm going to give you a bunch of dates and the results of these launch attempts. Here we go. July 20th, 2018, they had a failed suborbital launch. November 29, 2018, another failed suborbital launch. March 23rd, 2020, the rocket failed during pre-launch testing in Kodiak Island, Alaska. September 12th, 2020, that was an orbital launch attempt that failed. December 15th, 2020, they reached the orbital altitude, their target altitude of 390 kilometers, but they didn't get a stable orbit. So partial success, partial failure. August 28th, 2021. This one was my favorite. Do you remember it going sideways when it was trying to launch? Rockets are supposed to go up, not sideways. I love that one. So that was a failed launch. November 20th, 2021. Yay, their first successful launch. It was a demonstration launch for US Space Force. February 10th, 2022 another failed launch. March 15th, 2022, another successful launch, their second successful launch. It was a rideshare mission. They had several customers. They got those customers payloads to orbit. Congratulations, Astra. June 12th, 2022, a failed launch. And it was at that point in the summer of 2022, two years ago, that they decided to retire their Rocket 3. So all of these rockets were named Rocket 1 point something, 2 point something, 3 point something. And they decided to retire that Rocket 3 point something version and go on to the bigger, more slightly bigger, more capable Rocket 4. But we haven't had a launch attempt in two years. They were initially saying that Rocket 4 was going to launch in 2023. That obviously did not happen. So now they're saying 2024. We're halfway through 2024. So I can't say it's not going to happen, but it's not looking good. Who knows? What? I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they still have half of 2024 to accomplish that goal. They don't have a lot of recent information to go on. On their website, they have a link to a payload user's guide. I was surprised. I have to note that as someone who has helped to write a payload user's guide for a launch vehicle and someone who has used payload user's guides for launch vehicles, this document was not actually a payload user's guide. It was a marketing document to get customers, not so much a user's guide for customers to use the rocket that have all the details that a user would need, but it did have some interesting information in there marketing wise. The last version of this document was put up in November 2022, so it's not exactly recent, but back then they thought that they would have Rocket 4 launching by 2024, which again, they still might. They say ramp up production in 2024, and they also were expecting to have a third launch site in 2024. So they've been primarily launching out of Alaska. They have a launch site secured out of Cape Canaveral, Florida, and then they also 
wanted a third one and on their website they state that that third launch site is forgive me brits if i say this wrong i'm an american saxaboard uk so that's where they want their third launch site to be there's no point in having a second or third launch site if you're not launching rockets so i don't think that's going forward anytime soon but that's what they have on their website for 2024 is that planned uk launch site my guess is that they have some kind of governmental agreement at that region that is giving them money or a promise to give them money if they set up a launch site there rocket 4 hasn't launched yet but as of last year, they did have a prototype of it, and they do have actually a launch contract, at least one that they have publicly announced. Back in April of 2023, they were awarded a launch task order for Rocket 4 for the U.S. Space Force's Orbital Services Program OSP-4 contract. They don't specify how much money was in that contract, but at least that's some money that they're putting towards Rocket 4. The problem here is the lack of money, right? You just heard that their valuation went from several billion dollars to $12 million, and it was trading at about you know, 53 cents, 54 cents yesterday. So you can imagine that they don't have a whole lot of money to play with. However, their most recent SEC filing, which was May 29th of this year, actually specified that they have an income for 2024, not just revenue, but an actual income of $38 million. That is entirely due to their propulsion acquisition. So back in July of 2021, right after they went public, they acquired Apollo Fusion, which is an electric propulsion company. There's been a lot of reporting in the news that there was a lot of turnover with that company. The two teams did not integrate well. So a lot of the original employees are gone. However, that company, that acquisition is still providing them with some kind of revenue, enough to give the company a net positive for 2024 as of the end of May. I recently did a video where I talked about the possibility of Virgin Galactic running out of money before its new Delta class space planes are built and launched. I will link to that video above if you are interested in that. So this could be a similar situation where Astra simply runs out of money before it's able to complete Rocket 4 and launch it. And even if it launches it, you can see it's checkered history. It's not just launching, it's launching to success, it's launching to customer success. But I think that Astra has some things going for it, which is that Rocket 4 is a slightly larger rocket. It's not a large rocket, but it is more capable. And we are seeing the trend in industry of going towards, instead of small launchers, medium-sized launchers and larger launchers. There is a significant launch need right now, which is really funny because back, you know, five, 10 years ago, there was projections of a lot of these small launch companies just going out of business because people thought there would not be enough business to handle all of these smaller launch companies. And what we're seeing is the industry change so that the demand for launch has increased significantly and the accessibility of launch has decreased or at least not kept up the pace enough. And so what we're seeing now is that if Astra were to actually prove Rocket 4 is a successful option for customers, I can definitely see Rocket 4 getting the business like immediately because there's so much need for launch right now, which is not the same thing for Virgin Galactic. That's suborbital, that's tourism, etc. So this really is a different story. If you listen to any interviews by the co-founders recently, you will see that they are very optimistic. That's their job is to be optimistic. I have actually been pretty pessimistic about Astra for years. So back in 2021, they had stuff in their marketing and Chris Kemp was talking about how they would launch up to 300 times a year by 2025. Yeah, they're not doing that. I knew back then that they weren't doing that. Not even SpaceX has gotten to that point yet. Will SpaceX launch 300 times in 2025? Maybe. I don't know. SpaceX is quite the exception, but Astra certainly was not that exception. They were never going to make that. That's an almost daily cadence. Now in their documentation on their website, they talk about how they want to ramp up to a weekly cadence, about, you know, 50, 52 launches a year, which is a reasonable amount, but not, not this year, obviously not next year. Um, I couldn't tell you. We're just going to have to wait and see whether that's realistic for Astra. I think that's realistic for some rocket companies such as Rocket Lab, ULA, if it can actually get Vulcan going. You know, some of these companies that have operational rockets, I think that's a realistic cadence. I don't think that's realistic for Astra right now, but I think that's something that they can aspire towards that's more realistic than 300 times a year. This was only a preliminary look. If you want deep dives into certain rocket companies or the space industry, my company, Astrolytical, actually does that. The bottom line that I can tell you here in terms of whether or not Astra will actually even fly again, well, I actually think that they have a decent chance of flying at least once more with Rocket 4 simply because they have the hardware. In an interview that Chris Kemp gave to Ars Technica last year, he stated that the expensive parts of Rocket 4 already are there. They already have those parts and it's just integration and testing. And that was last year. So I actually think that they have a decent chance of getting Rocket 4 off the ground. Whether or not it succeeds will tell me whether or not I think Astra has an actual future. 
If Rocket 4 succeeds, I think they do. If they have as much trouble with Rocket 4 as they did with their previous iterations, I think the company's probably doomed. Tell me in the comments below whether or not you think Astra is going to succeed. If you're interested in space, special purpose acquisition corporations, SPOCs, and how they've been faring, check out this video next.